All right, am I live now? I should be live now. Sorry for the delays. The Tim's NHL Hockey Challenge. Oh, I got an ad for my own stream. It's crazy. Okay, we're live now. So what's popping, everyone? It's your boy Levi. This is the finale of Play Like a Pro. We're going to be looking at Nazimi. Sorry that I'm a little bit late. I had some stuff going on, so I just wanted to make sure that we got into the game. That's why there's no intro. Um, this, I know we'll say season two. This is the finale of season one. As I mentioned in a previous live stream, I'm going to be going back and changing all the titles to match the correlated season for Eternal Return, just for more clarity. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at Nazimi. He's a well-known player, has two accounts in the top of the ladder. I believe one's Immortal and the other is Titan. It's a very good mage player, and he's kind of known for playing multiple different characters. So I wanted to showcase that by picking three wins on three different characters. We're going to be looking at Emma. We'll be looking at Ava and Adriana, all mages. So definitely going to be a mage heavy episode. Learning some of the things that makes him successful, some, things, some of the things that make him so dominant in games. If this is play like a pro, if it's your first time watching this series, this is a series where we dissect the top NA players and see why they're so good. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, I got the first game loaded up just because I wasn't sure how late I was going to be, and I don't have a ton of time today. So, no intro, just jumping right into it. So, starting off here in Chapel, and we know time and time again from people who get the Chapel spawns that this spawn and this spawn here are preferred, but they're both taken, so Nazimi's going to be staying in the Chapel spawn, and I'll do my best to keep my mouse off the screen. And we're also going to be crafting bread with tears immediately, getting that inventory space. It's a good early game food if you are going to be getting better food later and it'll help you stay alive on routing, especially on a slippery character like Emma. Talking about Emma's strengths and weaknesses, she's very good at poking, has some burst, deceptive amount of burst with the amp drone. Going to be looking to staying away in fights and poking out with hat and cards. Picking up some mastery by poking out Dailin, not wasting any time though to stop, just getting some mastery and keeping it moving. Hey Wallen, how's it going? So here in Gas Station, chose to walk up, not hyperloop. General rule for hyperlooping while routing is that if you can walk to the next zone, you like one zone over, you walk. If it's more than one zone over, you should TP. So we got our shoes and our weapon online here. And Emma kind of has enough like base damage in her kit with hat and card that once she gets her ult, she can start to look to start hunting with just two items. Might see him complete a chest piece as well. That picks up hunts off the bat, loots the camera, and we're still continuing to get our items. Remember with hunting during the early game, you don't want to be taking any hunts that will slow you down. Emma able to clear wolves pretty quickly here with one spell rotation. And then continues on looking for more items. Still early in the day. Gonna be able to pick up chickens as well here. Groups them all up. And then alts back to the hat to get the full clear. Here in the alley, we're gonna pick up some more wolves while we're looking for items. And this is an amp drone, Emma. And notice how in the early game, he's not really caring about his amp drone being online. Not looking for any early game fights against players, so you know he doesn't need it. Can use it on animals, no problem. Also helps with the clear speed as well. Gonna pick up the dogs here as well, grouping them up together. Once again, using the amp drone to help clear, and then back in the alley. Here for the bears on time as well. So finishing his build, making sure he gets to a bear zone. This one only has one bear, but it's kind of on route for him. And we'll see if we... Uh, if, we'll see if he groups up with his team next. Also starting to get his prep online, that looks like... Mithril Dress. As well as glue potentially for... Uh, steel Shoes. Or Mithril Shoes. Groups up the Luke. Luke ends up getting a solo kill, which is pretty nice. Always good when your team picks up a solo kill. But is grouped up in Hotel now. We might see his Lennox come in. Night 1 still kind of the meta for when you should group up. 
split farming hasn't been rewarded. It's getting incentivized a little bit more next season, I believe, with some XP buffs to solo crafts. I'll have that backwards and it might be decentivized, I'm not sure. But anyways, grouped up with Team Night 1 is rewarded with a 3v2 for the grouping. And able to pick up two early kills. Had Magnus spin with his team there, that would have been a 3v3. But able to take them down with the numbers advantage and able to pick up another kill here, potentially. I was going to manage to get away, but the lead I Lin's going to port in here. And that's just the power of not being grouped up early, right? Like, gonna pick up another kill here on Ali Dai Lin, Straggler TPing to his Aya, trying to group, but just not getting there in time. And they're here for a day two objective as well. Meteorite's here, gonna look to get the moon online potentially for Emma. Jenny kinda in the front line here. Yeah, she kind of just gets collapsed on. Doesn't have the dash to get out, too, so... We'll pick up a kill on Jenny without passive as well. So three quick kills to start the game. As well as a meteorite. So super strong start for him. Calls in the uh, Arcana, so... It will be the moon, it looks like. Let's talk about the comp a little bit. So between this comp... The damage dealers are Luke and Emma. It's really good to build Emma up first in this comp, just so that her poke can help uh, start the fight. A lot of the damage early on is going to come from Hat and Card, and then Luke will look to clean up the fight. And notice how Nazimi TP'd back here into Gas Station, because he had the timer for the wolves, right? Cleared them on his first route on day one, and they're here respawning on day two, able to get back here right as they spawn so that no one else can take them. Making good use of his hunt rotation, and gonna look to make an early call in as well. One thing that playing, if you're playing solo, making a day two call in has been pretty good if you can get a tree or a mithril online. It's uh, just to help. Looks like he wants someone to call his ice in for him for Scotty, but. It's really good to have that early transition for any fights that happen either now or before battle zone or in battle zone. Now let's talk a little bit about how Nazimi played that fight, right? Isaac got the engage onto him. His first thought was reactive defensive alt out, right? And his team kind of pushed forward a little bit, which is kind of why they're losing this fight. But Nazimi's first reaction was defense, and then he hopped back in to help when he could. Obviously, he's trying to save the tree. He's not trying to full commit as well, but... Really good to recognize that that was a dangerous scenario first, and then put himself into a safe place where he can then react on how to play the fight. Had they been able to reset that fight first, and then with his cooldowns went back in, they probably wouldn't have been able to pick up a kill, or maybe a full team wipe, but the loot kind of went in a little bit early. Good polymorph on the Shoichi on the alt, and able to pick up a straggler kill. Moon plus Scotty is pretty good for Emma early. She's going to have a lot of burst damage on her poke. And the slow from Scotty is going to help Lennox land whip skill as well as Luke get gap close easier. TP into Doc Battle Zone. This is the attack battle zone, so good zone for Emma. Offensive zone is good for Emma because she's very hard to hit anyways. And she'll be putting out a ton of poke damage. You know, once Emma typically gets hit by something, she kind of gets one shot, so... Not too big of a benefit being in the defensive zones. Just a stray Martina here. It shouldn't be too hard of a kill to pick up. She's just here for her stacks anyways. I imagine that Bowser will go to a teammate. Luke picks up the Mithril. And another good part of being in the battle zone for in dock as Shoichi goes down the bears is because of the bears you know bears are respawning here for night two taking on night one dock battle zone means you get the dock bears you get the warehouse bears genuinely and you can kind of run the gauntlet to get up to uptown bears and beach bears but uh with an uptown battle zone won't be able to get those bears but team will be able to make a call in here good kiosk location
And let's see, what do they path to next? Day three coming up, want to try and look for purple boxes, want to try and look for respawning hordes. The wolf hordes will be coming up soon, the ones that respawned on day one. They will, or on uh, day two rather, they'll be up here on day three, so factory will be looking to respawn soon. The one in archery will be respawning soon. Are gonna path into factory. I don't think they picked up their dock bears, but so that's a little bit of XP missed. Genuinely, between dock and warehouse, you want to go to the one that you don't have in your battle zone first. Take those and then go back to your battle zone because those are guaranteed to be yours. No one here in factory. These wolves are up. Weren't taken on day two morning, so you can kind of infer that all of the hunts here in factory are up. It hasn't been looted through yet. And there is a purple box spawning in Cemetery, so they might go Factory Horde plus Cemetery Purple Box. You know, when you're deciding on objective on where to go, you try and want to see where the greatest amount of value is on the map that you can safely get to. Because they're already on this side of the map, Purple Box plus Horde's pretty good. Battle Zone plus Barrier is pretty good. You know, it's... Of course, you want Bowzone, Horde, Alpha if you can, but those don't always line up. Gonna pick up the purple box here, and is Amy gonna pick up his third transition? It's day three now, spectating bugs still in the game, where it shows night two. And it looks like there's gonna be a free tree in the hospital that they'll be able to grab as well. Might look for a day three call-in as well, super popular call-in time. That tree might go to a four square for Persona. Nazimi having the prep. Yeah, there's the meteorite, so that'll be a persona. Mutant horde in factory is up as well. Lennox is taking the wolves. Everyone kind of doing something, no time being wasted, which is good. And deceptively, you would think Emma wouldn't be able to hunt well, but she's got really good clear, able to take mutant horde by herself, especially with that ant drone helping out. We'll take some damage for it, but able to clear. But then teammates can also look for a call in here as well with their credits. Yeah, there's Lax. Getting a Mithra online, that'll probably be for Myth Chest. So at this point, you gotta like kind of take in where you are in the lobby. You've got a battle zone win, you got night one, day two objective. You got day three purple box, you got a day three objective, you got a horde, you've gotten bears. Probably feeling pretty good in the lobby. Three transition Emma, three transition Luke, and a two transition Lennox. So pretty strong, probably stronger than most teams. And you've also picked up some kills, so you're pretty good on mastery as well. Because of that, you can kind of look to fight some other teams if you run into them, kind of like this. When you're a team without a marksman and you're fighting a team with a marksman, you do have to kind of play dive or look for a pick. You can't just play front to back. You will get out damaged quickly by the marksman. So it looks like they don't want that fight. We'll run away from Nazimi's team. And Night 3 should be approaching soon. Nazimi's team not looking to walk up to Omega. Might look for a purple box instead. And the fight psychology is kind of the same for each Emma fight. You're going to look to poke out with hat and cards first. Pick up some bears too as it gets to nighttime. Have to be careful committing the hat on poke bill because that is your escape as well. So make sure it does in a safe distance. Gets the polymorph down, gets the cards. Really good peel from Lennox there to stop the Jackie from jumping on Emma. Jackie kites back, but the ISIL, I believe, is already down. Trading one for one is pretty good when you have the health advantage. Magnus and Jackie forced to flee. So really good fight there. Zemi looking for the angle on the ISIL before he committed his uh, spells. That was kind of just what I was talking about when you're fighting a team with a marksman versus having no marksman. You can't just play front to back, so he dove the ISIL.
And it's likely in this comp that Nazimi will be the one that gets out in a bad fight, being Emma. We're kind of all in, Lennox not having any dashes, so... Nazimi can hold credits to save. They are really strong, so I don't think he has to hold 250. He could probably hold like 100 or something, so we might see a call in here. Yeah, Mithril coming in, that puts him just under 100. And Hospital Wolves are now respawning again. They had the timer for that. Also, not doing too much movement. Six teams still alive, so good on them for sticking to one to two zones. Don't want to be hyperlooping around the map. Is going to pick up the Wolves there. Engage on a pre here. Zemi defensive ult out again. And I have to believe that that's because they're fighting, again, a team with a marksman. They had to engage on a Priya, you know, when you think of a Priya team, they kind of want you to engage on their Priya so she can ult and then go into stasis and try and make the enemy team dance. Nazimi kind of recognized that, that that's not how they win fights in this comp. Defensive ulted out first, however, they're so strong on transitions, they're able to force that fight anyway. But that's the kind of thing that you have to be able to recognize so quickly. You know, if that was an even fight, that fight would have been a fight loss because they're engaging onto the Priya instead of the Rio. So, really good first defensive step. Able to fucking turn the fight bull just because they're so strong. Really good play there. Once again, the Zemi also would have been the one to res, so had to get out first. And we're here on day four as well. Has 305 credits again, so might look to make another call in just because they're so strong. With Wick coming on night four in a minute, they're pro if they contest Wick, they're probably not going to be able to get to a kiosk anyway after to revive if there's other teams that show up. Ops for the attack skill. So values the level three stasis, getting the lower cooldown, getting the refresh more than the 5% cooldown he would get on Mithril Dress. So they'll make the long run to Wick, I believe. Have to imagine that a team this strong would go to Wick. They've got five transitions on the Emma, five transitions, four transitions on the Leaf. Sorry, four transitions on the Emma, four transitions on the Leaf, three transitions on the Lennox. And this is the part where Luke tries to take over the fight some more. Emma gonna look to dive in with Polymorph. Luke gonna be the bulk of the damage coming out now. Are some teams in forest already set up for wick so they will be showing up a little bit late no team will be able to take it though just because there's a bunch of teams nearby and they're gonna know that teams are in the zone too because of the Cicela alt so they have to be careful they're gonna see the dead bodies on the ground as well and know that two teams are probably fighting distracted by the fight they'll probably look to take wick and the alt amp drone will be the commit on the wick so Really good play to recognize that teams are fighting and that they can get Wick in the time being. Almost like a stealth Wick play. And notice how they went to Wick instead of trying to third party. Like they're playing for the win rather than playing to just get RP. You know, that would have been a few fights. Or a few kills rather that they could have picked up but probably wouldn't have gotten Wick. The team behind them, pink team, probably would have gotten Wick. So really good to play for the win there. This is kind of a forced engage. Luke is going to get burned down here, I think. In a corridor against a Shukai is really tough. Cards actually end up missing too, so his team's getting burned down a little bit. They do take one with them. Zemi able to pop the Jenny into stasis. Going to be able to kill the Cicela as well. He dodges behind his teammate on the pull, and is going to be able to take out the Jenny as well. I think she will die to Hex, so... A little bit of an outplay there. Casual Nazimi picking up the 1v2. Kind of made it a 1v1 by putting the Jenny into her passive and then looking to 1v1 the Cicela. So really good play out of him there. You know, when you're a good player, you get put in the bad positions. Like, sometimes you just have to make the outplay. I'm a character too that's not known for 1v2ing. Man, that was beautiful. Yeah, Nazimi, mechanically one of the best players we have in Eternal Return. On any server. 
So day five here, no revives coming in anymore. So they're going to look to establish vision and final zone. Let's see how they play a final zone here. Ops for vision console first. Make sure they're staying safe. They don't want to commit to any fights. They're going to want to look to poke out first using the Emma poke as Scotty for the slows and then look for picks if they can. We're probably going to see Nazimi very hesitant to ult in on the fights just because that's kind of his commit button. So probably will look for poke, but if anything, he'll be ulting backwards out. Gonna force this team into red here. Alts forward to push them into red. Ton of poke down on the Aiden. And really smart play to not chase. They know that there's no team in forest because of the vision console. We'll be able to see this team run into them on this camera. Don't wanna get sucked into a third party in red. And once again, looking to clear out the vision. Wanna take out the top side so that they can have full priority over the top zone that's about to spawn. And we'll see where they play for the final zone. So they're kind of hovering. Their vision console is going to run out soon. And they're playing the choke up into the, the final zone. And I like this because it gives you three things. One, you can look for the other two teams if they're third partying, if you do have the vision console. Two, if the other two teams fight and it becomes final two, you get an advantage point on the final zone console, being a short run over. And then three, uh, if a team does try to run up to this final zone at the top, you can kind of cut them off and get a surprise attack, get some poke down. Basically, you're forcing them to make a decision about uh, which zone that they go to. Hi, Feline. How's it going? <laughs> Heck, you want to play like a pro? Feline, you got one more day. Or I guess today's your last day, right? How close are you? So right before our final zones hit, they're going to hit the vision console one more time, and they're going to see that these two teams are fighting and pick up an easy third party. No, even, no need to even go in the final zones. It's a really clean game for game one. You're not making it? Hey man, I'm still proud of you. Keep going though. You got four hours? I think you got four more hours. I gave up, we go to myth next season? Ah, oh, no worries. Here, let me show you something real quick. The first season, I tried to, like I had never been diamond. I, uh, I, my first diamond push in back in season four, I missed it by like eight LP. I'm pretty sure I was like eight LP off. So it definitely happens. Don't worry about it. See if I can find it. I was like, I was like one game off. I'm pretty sure before the time ran out. Yeah, I was eight LP off me and this other guy who was six LP off. <laughs> we just needed one more game. <laughs> So it happens. Oh, Bandit was, uh, I guess that's Bandit Smurf, but he was one, one promo off. Feels bad. The platitude, I learned a lot about my character, so I'm not upset. That's good. I can use all of that next season. I want to see you in uh, ER, ER Conquest season two. All right, game two, we're going to be looking at Ava, another mage. As I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, the Zemi really known for playing a ton of characters. So we'll get an Ava gameplay in. We'll have Emma, Ava, and Adriana. Spawns up here in gas station. Gets the middle spawn, kind of the best one that you can get close to the Hyperloop. And he started E, Ava's E being her mobility spell. So help her loot a little bit faster.
Like, I feel really good about my Nikki and that's saying something because I felt awful about it. Oh, that's good. I'm glad your confidence is building. That's super important, too. You're gonna have to race Atazia here. Able to get his items quick TP into stream, or into pond, rather. Gonna have to race Atazia again. This zone already looted, so we'll have to go into a second distribution. Just the W knockup to help run to the car ahead of Tazia. Also getting mastery from her, poking her down. Gonna get another knockup on the Tazia to help run ahead again. Having to go through three distributions, so gonna be a little slower on build this time, but able to get all those items it looks like. And has weapon. Same thing with Ava as Emma. Low cooldown alt, kind of not really resource dependent, so can use it to start hunting very soon. And will be two item, maybe three item here. Tazia probably a tough matchup for Ava, able to dash out of all her abilities. Yeah, and there's the ultimate. Gonna use that to farm. Pick up a leather as well. Able to poke out a Shukai here. Gonna channel the full ultimate. Forcing Shukai out of that zone. His Shukai is also here. Gonna try and take the 2v2 maybe. Or the 2v1. Looks like the other team's gonna get there first. So finishing his build by night one still a little bit behind. We usually see him finish by one minute left in the day two so he can pick, or day one so he can get wolves. Pick up some hunts here. Gonna run into another two pairing. Gonna have a 2v2 here with his Shukai. A lot of damage down on the Rio. Rio jumps in. She's gonna die for it, it looks like. A lot of damage going over, so that's basically a one for one trade though. The Zemi though, recognizing that he is a mage, not out of the fight yet, is able to poke from over the wall, and it's so easy to just like run away from this fight and assume that you can't provide much more, but able to use that wall for cover, provides shielding from the haze, and able to get a ton of damage from over the wall to help his Shukai take down the haze. So really smart play there. It's a really important property if you're a mage player, especially when you play artillery mages, you know, Ava, Emma, Adina. It's really important that uh, even when you're forced out of a fight, you still look for opportunities where you can get some of your spells in safely. Obviously, you don't want to die for it, but if you can still provide damage to a fight, that's always a good play. And it looks like they might group up for Temple. Temple Tree, maybe. This is going to be trying to get some extra hunts in. Gonna go up and get these dogs. If you throw skill shots over walls, does it give vision of you? I, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, at combat removes fog of war. I believe. It's the same with bushes. If you attack from inside the bush, they can now see you. You can also hear sound effects from fog of war. So a little late to tree. Not going to be able to contest it. Going to look to poke out another team, get some more mastery. And it's kind of the same thing. Every time he sees a team, it's QWR. Gonna walk up on a Chiara here. Instant flash. Knows that if Chiara hits that E on him, he's most likely dead. Look at the positioning on this fight, right? Hiding over the wall. Kind of not like he can walk up to the front lines to poke if he has to, but staying behind that wall, looking for an angle to poke from, 
Looking for alternate angles. Never putting himself in the danger. It has a good angle to put damage down on the Luke. This should pick up a kill here. Yeah. Not going to be able to chase down anyone else, but really good angle there. I don't think it gives you vision, but some give you vision. I know vision comes from bushes. I think maybe you don't get it from over walls, but I thought you might. I don't think. Oh, sorry. Let me let me let me rephrase this. You don't get vision of like the person. You, you get vision of the skill shot goal. Like if Ava alts over the wall, you can see the laser. I don't think you can see Ava's character model, but you can pick out where the laser's coming from. It doesn't. You don't just take like invisible damage. So day two's winding down here. No, you wouldn't be able to auto someone. Unless you had like a way of getting vision over that wall. So here for battle zone, attack battle zone again, kind of the same reasoning as Emma from before. This one's also near an alpha, which is nice. It looks like they should get this battle zone for free. And this comp surprisingly is really good at objectives. You probably wouldn't imagine that a Shukai Magnus Ava comp is that good at objectives, but this comp is really good for going to objectives. Uh, you can look to poke with Magnus Q and Shukai Q, both of them slow if they land. And then Ava can kind of unload her whole combo on them. Once again, transitions going over to Ava. She's kind of the main damage dealer in this fight, so this one makes a little bit more sense than the Emma. Emma is kind of split for the Luke late game. This one's going to be all Ava. Once again, just poking out. Good awareness to notice the Suda creeping up on them too. Cancels ult immediately and gets out of there. And he's always keeping his VF meter full as well. Always looking to keep that meter full when poking or whether it's on alpha. And this team is a really good third party team too with Shukai ult and Magnus ult. Eva able to provide a lot of damage as well. I initially thought this comp was really bad, but like looking at the part, the properties of it, it's got really, it's really strong at doing what it's strong at, if that makes sense. Like the poke in the all in game isn't that great, but poking out and harassing on objectives is very strong. Really good at third partying. They have really low commitment to a fight. You know, they can basically start a fight with Magnus Q and Shukai Q just from it, the threat of Ava being strong. This is the Nazimi here with 350 credits as well. Once again, gonna be the one that escapes in a fight if he has to. Gonna be the one that revives probably. Able to kind of solo farm here though, just because it is their battle zone. Once again, instant flash out from the Chiara. Afraid of that E. If he gets hit by that, he's probably just dead. And then back to the solo safe farming again. We should see him group up with his team here. Probably will make a hyperloop just to get there. Doesn't want to get caught with day without being able to hyperloop, especially with people nearby. We'll see pings on the console. So it doesn't get the wolves, just ops straight TP. Red team all in the other team when they know they can get sandwiched was not a good decision. That was a horrible idea, but unfortunately that happens sometimes. People get two kill blinds, forgot that they just hit a team and ran by. To be fair, they only saw the Ava. Didn't know if her whole team was nearby, but still definitely I shouldn't have taken that fight. Or 
before probably assumed that this Ava team would go for alpha instead of third partying. So I'm going to look for a call in here. It's day three now. Uh, once again, timer glitch for spectating. I'm going to look to take some hunts again. These are the hunts that Ava took before, so we'll have the timer for them. Be able to see that they're respawning soon. And Ava also able to get their Force Core online for Persona. So really strong here with three transitions. And they're going to head into Temple here, pick up the bears that they didn't get as well. No, you're right. Coin flip, sir. You definitely want to avoid the coin flips if you can. Have to be careful moving around here. It's still eight teams. Day three. Temple Horde not going to be spawning yet, so we'll look to come back here maybe. And making their call-in with their team. Day three is super popular call-in time. Gonna probably check for stream bears. There are hunts available here, so should be able to pick up some XP. Shukai only on one transition. Magnus on two, so once again, looking to stack the Ava if they can. Magnus will provide a little bit of extra damage, but it will be mostly Ava. Grouping up here for a purple box, going to want to be able to get this on when it spawns, as well as the bears that will be respawning soon for night three. Jenny sniffs out the Magnus. It's going to look like it'll be a rough fight. Magnus not getting the wall stun. Flash bike from Sylvia pushes Nazemi out of fight. They're gonna get charmed in, and it looks like Shukai might get out. Really good knock up to stop the Jackie. And a lot of burst is gonna be able to get them out. Ava really good at kiting backwards. Other team can't be a chase into them. So Magnus kind of forcing the engage there, you know. He had the stealth in the bush angle, but got found out by the Jenny Q, still forced to engage anyway. Didn't get the knock up or the knock into a wall on E. Kind of why they lost the fight there. Really good play though to get the Shukai out and then get the res. Zimi did have enough credits to res. He has 250 now, so could have done it himself if he if Shukai had gone down. But they do have the timer on these bears, so they are able to get these bears. We'll have to give up the purple chest though. I'm so excited for the new Maid Fiora. Is she the paid skin this season? I believe so. I think she's... I think they announced that she was. Have the angle on a Jenny here. It's going to dash forward to try and farm. So really big mistake from Jenny. And they kind of just looped around to flank the team that they just killed that just killed them. So really good play to see them coming on the vision console and take advantage of Jenny trying to get some extra XP. He just flashes out, probably not going to look to chase this one too far. But it is night three now. Or it's almost it's almost the end of night three, rather. Day four, probably will look for another purple box. Once again, there's still eight teams alive, so not going to be moving around too much. Kind of just hanging out in the zone. Not really moving around the map, kind of triggering to see what, what's safe, what isn't. They have pretty good control over stream, so... Ava backline not looking bad. She's pretty good. You know, Ava not too difficult of a mechanical champion either, right? Like, Nazemi being one of the best mechanical players in our region, let alone in Eternal Return, playing one of the simpler characters. You don't have to play a hard character to do good. We've seen this team fighting on radar scan, I imagine, so it looks for the third party here. Flash forward. Gonna try and get the kill on the Shukai. Looks like it'll be enough. Oh, barely lives. 
Um, not sure if they'll be able to chase him down. Once again, they'll playing for the win. Gonna look to stay around in this wick zone. And they mostly cleared out this zone too, so can look to take vision console now. So there's vision. And then they'll see that this zone is empty, so they'll be able to know that they can take Wick immediately when it spawns, assuming no one comes in. There's only one team really nearby, so they should go to them immediately. Once again, looking to play for the win, not necessarily looking for third party kills. Yeah, instantly starts it up. And that'll be a wick buff for them. Now, Ava probably looking for Dragon Scale plus Fireball, so Blood probably won't go to her. Has a Meteorite, so might call in a tree to make Force Core and then call in another tree with her credits, and she still, still should be... Uh, she should have enough for both of them with 480. Good use of Q to check out bushes. They have really good face check with Magnus Q, Shuka Q, and Ava Q. Really easy to tell if someone's in a bush. And there's the first tree, so that should be for Dragon Skill for four square. And then there's the second tree. For fireball. So don't see her upgrade tactical skill this time. Probably not the same emphasis as on Ava's blink as uh, the stasis on Emma. Emma, you know, jumping into the fight needs the stasis in case she gets caught out. Ava playing so far back in a lot of these fights has a good front, front line. Not really blinking out a ton. Has blinked a few times on the Chiara, but not really that much of an issue. Probably okay with the level two blink. Radar scan hits here for day five. They'll see a lot of teams here in hospital. And with six teams left, you don't really want to commit to a fight. You know, these zones are getting smaller and smaller, so. Gotta look to poke out, try and force other teams into a bad spot if they can. Don't want to get third partied, of course. So I don't play a ton of mages to fire all the play on most of them. Uh, I don't know about most of them. I think Fireball is good on Ava. Blink's out here. Kind of taking a lot of damage, but they were able to win this fight. Probably pulled the trigger a little bit too early. I think they could have let uh, Ava harass a little bit more. Um, I believe... Fireball is the play on non Scotty characters. But I could be wrong. Able to pick off another straggler here. Wow, that did a lot of damage to that basic attack. Uh, but the name of the game is still the same for this comp. You know, poke out and then look to engage. Ava Q, Ava R, and then Magnus can bike in, Shuka can ult in while unstoppable. Or with the unstoppable ult. And with no revive left on day 5, teams are starting to wind down. This is why you want to try and play slower during these times, just because you don't know who's going to get caught where. So entering the final zone here, going to try and push their way in with poke. Should be able to do so. Uh, passive scales, yeah. With him, thirty percent. Able to pick off another straggler here. So we'll see them see how they play the safe zones again. There is one full team and two solo stragglers.
Gotta look to take the up final zone. Close to forest. The other team is there, so we'll have a, a forest fight. We'll look to poke out again. Everyone's spamming their spells. Do have the timer advantage too. And kind of look how Ava positions her ults for this fight. Gets hit by Luke Q, instantly walks back. When she wants to ult, it's always on top of a trap or very close to a trap. So if she gets engaged on, it gets stopped by the trap. You know, she's kind of playing around this double guillotine. She's not really looking to stop someone by stepping on it. They're on the trap again, eats the rapier skill and puts Chiara on a trap. Flashes away. Her team's not really peeling this Chiara off her that well, but once the Chiara ult runs out, knows that Shukai can finish her off, gets back into the zone for timer, and then helps the Magnus finish off the Aya. All that's left is this rat Elena, even if she takes Ava down, which she might. Uh, Shukai and Magnus should be able to kill her. Oh, didn't get her. But another clean win. Really good final fight there, using traps to... Because you kind of have to self-stun yourself to ult to get all your damage down, so... Playing around that. Also with the low alt cooldown, really quick to cancel alt if she has to. Really good play there. You know, Emma, Ava, similar characters. We're going to be looking at Adriana as well for the final game. Another mage. This one a little bit less artillery, a little more bursty. It's an interesting comp too. So Adriana here playing with Lennox and Bianca. Once again, starts the mobility spell starting with E level one so they can E over walls to get to the hyperloop. We'll see them E over the top wall here to get to the stream hyperloop. How many games are we looking at today? Just three. This will be the last one. I gotta go grocery shopping. Lower spawn here in gas station is going to be able to walk to alley for their next zone. Adri got a lot of damage over time, so hunting isn't too big of a problem early, especially with QW combo. Should see them start to take some hunt soon. Yeah, then picks up the hunts on the bat. Full Q plus an auto attack. Gotta look to take some chickens as well. Young Wu here, gonna take the other bits of hunts. I getting some pokes in as well. E over the wall. All those standard stuff when looting to try and be faster. Four items done is on the clogs. Gonna probably pick up the, the hiking boots. That'll probably get swapped off with the first dead body amp character that they come across just to swap to better boots. This is probably just for the routing. These wolves gonna get taken too. So a little unfortunate. Had to go to the top zone instead of the bottom, so didn't get to take the wolves. Might stick around for bears though. Yeah, there's the hiking boots. Looking to get some prep online too, probably, for transitions. Scissors Needle, that's probably Mithril Dress and Dragon Scale once again. Bear spawning here, so did stick around. Bianca here as well. We'll probably look to get some of the XP on the bear. Bianca not going to get there in time, but... And once again, Nazimi heading down. 
to this police station. We've seen them take hunts here in police station a lot. These dogs are already taken though. So we should see the Lionox probably group up with the Adri and Bianca soon. Lionox not really much of a solo farmer, so should be with her team. And there she is. It, this is, in my opinion, is kind of a rough comp, but it has the potential to win fights if they play it a certain way. They kind of really only have one option. Adri has to play pretty aggressive in this comp and rely on Lennox to peel her. And then when Bianca dives in, she can use her alts to help with the Bianca dive get damage down. I think their biggest strength in this comp is that they can fish for Bianca Qs, look for roots, and then follow up with Lennox pull and Adri's QW burst. No bears in Temple, unfortunately, so they will loop down the stream, try and look for the bears there, and then probably back up to the Temple tree. This comp is similar to the first comp where uh, kind of a two damage threat between Adrian and Bianca. Probably will build the transitions on Adrian and Bianca pretty evenly. Lennox probably won't get too many this game. So no bears, but they are able to get some hunts and it looks like they are pathing back up to the temple. It will be a free temple tree and they'll have radar scan to see if there's anything else available. They'll be able to see there's lots of teams hospital here and it looks like they're fighting as well. So let's see how they react on them on radar scan. There is a meteorite here as well. So three teams in hospital. Tree gonna stay on Adri. And it looks like they are running down. They are gonna run immediately to hospital and try and pick up some third parties as well. I imagine this tree will probably go to glacials for Adri to replace those hiking boots. And there's the third party. They will pick up one kill there, force the other guy back into the other team, so probably two kills going down there. And see if they can look for more. Still two teams here. Also probably looking for ice for the tree. Yep, there's the glacial ice, and that'll be the glacial shoes. As I said earlier, probably would have swapped off with the first ant body that they found. Either for like straight jackets or tachyons. Probably not tachyons because they're already CDRMX, but. Aggressive E forward into the Chloe. Chloe, a good matchup for Adri, but. It's kind of what I said earlier, where Adri has to be super aggressive in this comp, so. Zemi recognizes that. Flash forward as well into the Camillo. Really good spacing to dodge the Camillo taunt. The east forward again into the TOT hits the wall, and that's going to be two kills. Chloe does able to get away, barely, with the ultimate. Really good spacing, though, from Nazimi. And they're probably going to look to head into the pond battle zone, it's nearby. It's another attack battle zone, so good for Nazimi. Able to get out of the Nathapon E, didn't react quick enough. Might have, uh, might have to fight getting into this zone, though. Pretty good matchup against this team, though. Double melee. Bianca gets a good flank as well. Gonna be able to take out the Hyunwu, and they're gonna be able to chase the Nathapon into the zone. Ooh, good juke by the Nathapon, blinding the Adri. And the Lennox actually went down to the Cappy, so Cappy might get the revive. Yeah, she does get the revive. Nathapon stops his own Cappy, unfortunately. Are they going to try and get into the battle zone? They're holding the line. Oh, and the team actually backs out. Nathapon's the only one in there, so that's going to be a free battle zone win for Adri, and that's going to revive the team. They might look to just run back at the other team now that they're full health team. I think if their team floored it, they probably could have picked off these two here. Cappy going back in. Bianca picked up the Mithril from the battle zone. Lennox all only hits Hyunwoo. Nathapon gonna revive, but this team looks like it's gonna go down. They probably can chase this. Oh, maybe not. Flash forward, gonna see E forward. Ult goes a little bit wide. 
W went a little bit wide as well. There's the E. Doesn't want to get wall slammed. But really good play by Nazimi to hold the line on the battle zone there. Kind of a miscommunication by the enemy team as well. They should have all just walked into the battle zone. But that's they're probably playing solo. Bianca, I believe, got the reward. It went to Monarch. And they're here in the hospital again. Oh, they will actually get this Hyunwoo, it looks like. He tried to greed for a 1v1 with the Lennox. And they should be able to get some of the hunts here in Factory. I imagine with the amount of kills that they've picked up and the amount of hunts that they've gotten, they'll probably look to make a call in soon, probably in the hospital one or the chapel one, if hospital is closing. We might see Force Core immediately for Nazimi, looking to get that Persona online. Yeah, there's the hospital call and there's the Force Core, so that should be for Persona. And we'll probably see the same Myth Dress Persona Dragon Scale combo that we've been seeing on these mages. I'll look to clear out the rest of these hunts in here in hospital before the zone closes. And on day three, we'll see what play they make. Probably we'll look for a purple box again. And they're going to take these last second wolves too before they leave. Hospital closing, so not going to be able to run to the other side to get the tree over there. Plus there's pings up in the stream. So radar skin hits here. We'll be able to see that there's a team of two nearby. And they'll floor it into a factory here to try and get this purple box. We'll be able to kind of keep an eye on that other team based on when they take the meteorite in chapel. Knew that they were alone, so it should go pretty quickly. And the wolves are now respawned here in factory, so should be able to get those as well. Probably know that this team is coming for them based on that meteorite not getting taken before they got the purple box. Looks to push them back. Doesn't have Bianca. Bianca's got a good flank though. Doesn't want the open corridor fight. Want to fight in a tight corridor. You know, Adri really good in a tight corridor. Bianca gets the ult over wall. It's a great flank. They're going to look to blow up the Sua instantly. So really good pushing the fight into a corridor, recognizing that Bianca had a wall to alt over. Now that's just a clean wipe. You know, Sua, Magnus, really good in a corridor as well, but they got the jump on them, be able to hide in the bush and fight in the corridor, acted like they didn't want the fight, and then baited them in. So really good play there. And was able to get a mithril in that purple box, so able to make mithril dress and looks like we'll get more hunts. The horde will also be respawning now that it's day three, so can look to pick that up as well. Tons of XP coming across. Tons of credits as well. Can probably look to make another call in soon. Wants that force core for dragon scale. And there's another purple box spawning here in factory, so. Might look to take that instead of trying to make the long haul to a mega. They would have to TP. Six teams alive, you know, it's not the safest TP still. Maybe they'll go for it. Maybe they'll just take console. Looks like they'll get vision console and play for the purple box here. It looks like this will be free as well. Once again, timer glitch for spectating mode. This will be going into night three soon. Probably see some pings up in chapel. Yeah, we just saw that ping just now. So no, there's your team in chapel. It is night three now. Once again, aggressive E forward. Really playing aggressive in this comp.
and probably going to be able to force this team out of chapel. Lots of corridors to fight in, which is really good for Adri Bianca. I'm going to pick up Vision. And they're going to see this team leave chapel on the Vision camps as well. So I know that they have a free zone here in chapel. Four, uh, three of 50 credits and a tree in that purple box. Probably will look to call on a meteorite to get force core for uh, dragon scale. And then probably look to save for another meteorite for marble. Or pearl, I guess. You know, holding on to that weapon again, not upgrading to uh, not upgrading the weapon, probably trying to hold on to that healing reduction as long as possible. And once again, went blink, uh, probably won't upgrade the tactical skill, just uh, not as valuable as the Stasis was on the Emma, so. Yeah, there's the meteorite, and that'll be for marble. For pearl, I keep calling it marble. And we now have a full transition to Adriana. Bianca's also full transition, so once again, both damage dealers looking to transition. Lennox has three transitions. Persona is an interesting choice for her. So we head into day four as well. Five teams, so you can kind of move around on the map a little bit more freely. Not as bad as the seven or eight teams like the other game. Radar scan is going to be coming out soon too. You'll be able to see that there's no teams nearby and where the other teams are. Bears are still up, likely because the team that they forced out of chapel wasn't able to grab them in fear that they get chased. And even though they just had radar scan, they're not hyperlooping, still walking around the map. Do you want to try and get to a wick zone soon, probably? So this will be them pathing towards probably fire station. That should be the zone that Wick is going to spawn in here in three seconds. Wick prioritizing open zones if she can. Yeah, there's the spawn. So they will try and make the journey over to fire station, see if they TP or they walk. They're mostly empty zones on the way there. Not that they'd know that, of course, but... They have fully transitioned Adriana and Bianca, so they don't really need to be scared of any team. That combo can pretty much one-shot a squishy just if they're on the screen. And it looks like they will walk, so staying safe again. Even with Omega just getting taken on the other side of the map, still walking. Taking camps as they enter zones, playing it safe. Let's see how they enter the Wick zone too. So you can assure that, Wick, that teams will probably be there for Wick. Zemi gonna E over the wall, potentially to dodge the camera until the last second so they can go get the vision console. A little bit of a safer route than walking through this bush and around. Can get intercepted by teams over here. So really good pathing there. Gonna be able to see that there's another team here, so won't be able to start Wick immediately. And that team also probably lost camp, so they know that there's another team here. Lots of poke coming out from Adri. They have the cams, so they know that they can take this fight under the cams. So they're the only team that knows that they're around. Pick off Camilla really quick. Adri does use his combo on the uh, downed Camilla, so I quickly take time to wait for cooldowns when fighting the Chloe. And they're getting third partied here. Once again, Adri the most likely to live in a comp like this, having fire escape. Bianca kind of an all-in character. Lennox doesn't have any dashes, so good for Nazimi. Instead of buying that attack skill, saved for a res. Could have bought one in Hotel, I believe. So is going to be able to revive his teammate. I believe the Lennox probably has enough credits, or the Bianca has enough credits. So full team revive here right before day five and know that because they don't have vision in school anymore, that team is there. And instead of trying to force their way up through school back towards Wick, they make the safe play by walking through red into a hotel. 
That's really really smart play there. And when radar scan hits and they can see that there's a team waiting for them here with the wick buff. So super smart play there. Day five, no reses can come out now. We'll see how they play the final zones. Kind of have to play around vision. They're probably not eager to move around the map too much. They don't want to run into that wick team if they don't have to. And there's hunts here for them to take, so not too big of a deal there. Can get some credits so they can get some cams and double guillotines for the end of the game. Can make some last minute call-ins if they have to. Lennox probably looking to make some last minute transitions. So we'll have four transitions on the Lennox and then full transitions on the Adri and Bianca. So during this time, you kind of want to take note of the players that are left. So you can see that there's four teams with eight players left. Uh, basically, if you do the math, right, you're one of the teams. So that becomes three teams and then you're three of the eight players. So that becomes five players left. So you know that it's either a two, two and one left or a three, one and one left. And, you know, the WIC team is still a full team. So you can assume that it's three, one and one because you ran into them in school on radar. Uh, regardless, at this point, though, you have to be thinking about making sure that the rats do die before you do. You don't want to get third partied by a rat trying to fight another team or third party by another team trying to take out one of the rats. And they'll also rob you of placement places. So don't take any big fights until you're able to get rid of those rats. Notice how cautious they're moving, not even moving around hotel, right? Like they're staying on the side of the final one of the final safe zones. Not near that entrance to school at all, staying as far away as possible, controlling the kiosks so no other teams can call in some items. They'll have to do so in school if there were teams here in the hotel. They made the best choice. And now with three teams left, they won't be able to see the player count, but one team escaped, so you can assume that there's two other teams other than you. So you just want to make sure that Rat dies before you engage on the final team. Also want to wait for their wick buff to run out. It should be out by now. But look how cautiously they're playing this, right? They haven't moved from like this corner of hotel in probably two minutes. So Shukai looks like they're gonna deliver a kill to one of these teams. He's gonna take the vision console and get poked out. Shukai are going to try and stealth in, but they do have a camera, so they will burn him down immediately. And they want to make sure they don't burn any big cooldowns trying to get rid of the rat as well. Don't want to burn any ultimates doing that. So in case the other team comes over like this. Zemi able to get out. They're funneling into a choke. Perfect for Adriana. Good EOA to get out of the Kathy ult and back towards this team. And then good blink to get some separation. This team is going down rather quickly, though. Kathy and... Uh, Nathan Pond's still alive, and it wouldn't be a Nazimi clip if it wasn't for another 2v1. So really aggressive Ian on the Nathan Pond, able to take him out. Good dodge on the Kathy, able to kind of predict what she would do with the Q over the wall for the blind W, thinking that Nazimi would walk through the door, spaces it well, and a really good 2v1 outplay again for Nazimi. So one of Nazimi's best skills is his teamfight positioning, comboed that with skill shot accuracy. These two are very powerful together when played for her mages. Despite playing three different characters, we saw him pick up three wins, all looking super comfortable on the character that he plays. And that's because Emma, Ava, and Adriana all play similarly in a fight, being kind of artillery mages with some burst. The name of the game for him has been poke down the enemy and then look to engage with a health advantage. Of course, it also helps when you're in unfavorable positions if you can turn them around by getting those 2v1s and get out of them, as we saw multiple times. But he also has the skill to outplay his opponent, which is separate, which separates a good player from a great player, I think. So I hope you learned a lot about the mage role. It helps to be mechanically gifted as well, of course. You know, a lot of those situations a normal player goes down in. Like those are third place, fourth place, fourth place games that he's able to turn into wins. It's kind of what separates immortal players. They're consistently able to do that. He 
And you know, he didn't do any crazy flashy plays. He kind of just played the character to their limits, right? Made good plays, made smart plays, good positioning. And he, out, he had to outplay when he had to. It wasn't like he went into a fight trying to get the outplay. So, hope you all enjoyed that. The, the final episode of Play Like a Pro for this season. We will be back next season with some more players. I'm going to try and keep it players that we haven't looked at yet. Uh, we haven't looked at the marksman role yet, so I think I'll start off the new season whenever I get to that with a marksman player. Maybe we'll look at Pie Master if he's playing at the beginning of the season. Kind of the best marksman player that we have. If not, though, I'll see what we got. Um, yeah, so preseason starts tonight. Everyone, I hope you're getting your rank goals in. Today is the last day to grind. I think you have three hours to do so from now. Good luck to you. I might play one game because I think I'm about to drop out of Titan. So I might play one game and try and get back into Titan. We'll see. But thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate it. Hope you guys learned a lot about mages and the Zemi. And I will see you after preseason. I probably won't do any lives for preseason. So look out for that whenever it comes back. Goodbye.